One of the things in the reading you're about to read is it tells, and hopefully this formula is really recognizable to you guys, it's a formula to play, right? By the way, it's my name. The, um, the reading says clay has six H2O, which is incorrect. Clay has two H2Os, as you guys know. There are clays with more waters in the molecule. But we haven't learned about them. Like bentonite is a clay that's got more water in the molecule. But it's, bentonite is one of those clays that's so plastic that you can't really use it. It's like when you mix it up, it's like snot. It's really slimy. It's so, so plastic. It's basically just for molds? It's for, they add it to glazes to make the glazes flow better. Maybe stay in solution. But it's too plastic to be a, a useful clay. Anyway, this is the formula for clay, and what you're going to read about is clay comes from igneous rock. You guys know from volcanic rock. What I want to add to that is specifically clay comes from feldspathic rock. It typically comes from feldspars, and we're not learning about feldspars today. Specifically, what kind of igneous rock does it come from? Feldspathic rock or feldspars. Okay, there's a whole lot on that. So it comes from the. Oh, I wrote it up there. Uh -huh. It comes from the breakdown both. Physical, like the rock above the clay wearing it down, and chemically, so being heated and heated in the presence of water, it comes from that physical and chemical breakdown, forms clay, right? And it takes a long time for that to happen. Well, primary clay is clay that, that lives where it was formed, like it's right under the volcano where it was formed. Or if it's far from lava that the volcano shot out, it's right there, it has never been moved, okay? So it's buried under tons of other rock, if you see that rock is worn away, the clay is at the surface, it sometimes, sometimes it's buried. So it's primary clay. Primary clay, the main primary clay is kaolin. This is actually the formula for pure kaolin. Okay? So with clay with no impurities, primary clay is kaolin. Kaolin is not very plastic. It hasn't been worn down much. So the platelets and particles are big, and they don't slide on each other well, so it's not very plastic. So there's primary clays. Mostly we use secondary clays. What that means, they've been moved from their spot of origin, usually by water. So the water moves them sometimes a long, long ways, and it wears down the plates. It physically grinds them down, so the platelets are fine and smooth, and they slide on each other. And those clays are typically from somewhat plastic to very, very plastic. And secondary clays, you're going to read about all clays are super plastic. Okay? It's, what, it's what we use to make clays plastic. Fire clays are different. They're really sturdy clays. They have platelets of varying sizes. Some platelets are big and round in fire clays. Some platelets are smooth and flat. So fire clays have like a medium plasticity or less plasticity. But they add them to clays because they're really resistant to thermal shock. So if you add a fire clay to your clay body, it's probably not going to crack a lot. It'll probably be a sturdy, resilient, really impure. Usually that's iron. That impurity makes, makes the clay more plastic. Surface clays have been worn down a lot. They're plastic, they're impure, they're typically red, uh, red or red brown. They're a different kind of clay. So, two main kinds of clays primary and secondary. As it turns out, really all the clays we use are clay bodies, they're mixtures of clays. Okay? So, they'll have some primary clay, sometimes a combination of secondary clay. Our stoneware body that we use, our main stoneware bodies, are some kaolin to give it body some ball clay to make it plastic, and some fire clay to keep it from cracking. With a filler, the filler can be sand, or do you guys know what grog is? Anybody? Grog is ground fire clay. It's essentially ground visqueware. And they use that as a really often place. And then sometimes a flux. Sometimes if you have a lot of fire clay, or even sometimes a lot of really pure kaolin, the vitrification temperature is at such a high point that your clay won't vitrify. So they add a little bit of a flux typically a feldspar or something to that, to make it flux down. So a clay body is just a mixture of clays that we use to get the qualities we want. So how much sand we want, how much ball clay, how much kale, and it's a mixture of clays that gives us our clay, okay, the good clays that we actually use. Having said that, there are three main kinds of ceramics, or you could say clay bodies. There's earthenware, this is earthenware. It's, it's not very strong, it's usually kind of reddish brown, it's easily chipped. It never fully vitrifies. This is as vitrified as this gets. If this didn't have a plug in it, I dipped it in water, the water would seep out of it. Okay? So it's porous, usually like about 12% porous. It's really, that means if I dip it in water and boil it in water for an hour, 
it will absorb 12% of its weight in water, which is a lot, 12 to 15% of its weight in water. So it's not worth it. If I fire it hotter, it just melts. It never vitrifies. You must exclusively stoneware. Stoneware is a clay body that becomes like stone. It becomes very vitreous. If I dip this in water and boil it for, well, this is fired like cone 11, fire one absorb anything. But normal cone 10 stoneware, if I dip it in water, boil it for an hour, absorbs like 2 to 5% of its weight in water. Almost, almost no absorption. It's really strong, not easily chipped, very vitreous clay. And that's typically what we use. By the way, some stonewares exist in the ground. There are some stoneware bodies that exist in the ground, but they're really rare. There's not many in America. Um, so stoneware. The other kind of clay, which we're getting, is porcelain. Porcelain is the most vitreous. People say it's the purest clay. The reason they say that, porcelain is only kaolin and ball clay. There's no filler. There's no flux. It's just clay. And it's really pure. There's no iron in it. It's, it's really it becomes super vitreous at high temperatures. It becomes so vitreous that when you shine a light through it, it's fully translucent. And this is, this is a fairly thick cup, too. Okay, a really thin, you've seen China, probably China, fine China cups. China is a kind of kaolin, by the way. And they become so translucent, you can kind of see shapes through them. So, portion is the other main type of ceramic or clay body. And that's really it. Okay, so I have the reading for you guys.